Mamas, Alexandria here. Are you ready to unlock the secrets of staying full and satisfied, but still crushing your calorie budget so that you can lose weight and meet your goals? If that's you, then today's video is just for you because I am going to share those secrets with you. So if you're ready, let's get into it. So the first strategy is to eat breakfast, I know maybe you're thinking, that seems silly, I don't eat breakfast, I don't like breakfast. But one of the reasons that we eat breakfast is because it kicks off our metabolism. It helps our body to feel full faster when we're actually eating consistent meals, which is one of the reasons why after a while you'll notice that things like intermittent fasting don't really work, is because your body learns and is smart and learns, oh, hey, I need to conserve this food because I'm not gonna get to eat for a while. So during my time with Noom, they actually encourage that you eat breakfast and sort of kick the day off. The other piece of this is about decision fatigue. You're more likely to make healthy, better decisions at the front end of your day than you are at the back end of the day because we make thousands of decisions a day. But if we're making a decision first thing in the morning about, okay, this is the breakfast that I'm gonna eat and it has XYZ ingredients, you're setting the tone for your day and for what you're gonna eat. Whereas if you wait until like a lunchtime, you've already made a bunch of decisions and maybe you're more likely to grab that quick cheeseburger from McDonald's or whatever because you didn't take the time to plan accordingly. The second is to prioritize your protein. I actually have a video that's already up about some awesome protein packed meals. If you want to go check that out, I'll link it in the card for you. And prioritizing protein, but also make sure you get your fiber because you know, but prioritizing protein keeps you full longer because your body needs time to digest protein in a way that it doesn't for different ingredients in your body. All the food ingredients are important. Eat your carbs, eat your protein, eat your fats, all the things. You just wanna make sure that you're prioritizing the protein and then sort of letting everything else fill in the gaps because the protein takes longer to digest and therefore keeping you full longer. My third tip is to stay hydrated. Your body doesn't understand the difference between hunger and thirst. In a sense, basically the body cues feel the same to you. And so it may be that you haven't had enough water that day. So one of the important things to do is make sure that you're staying hydrated. If you're staying hydrated throughout the day, then you're less likely to be as hungry because you're not confusing your hunger and thirst cues. Does that make sense? So stay hydrated. Keep a bottle of water with you. I know we are in the era of the tumbler, we are in the era of the Stanley Cup. I know I have my knockoff. <laughs> we are in the Stanley Cup era, so there's no reason not to stay hydrated, but I know we get busy. But stay hydrated, and I promise you'll stay full longer. Number four is keep all foods on the table. And what I mean by that is don't set any food as off limits. When you tell yourself that a food is off limits or you can't have that or you can't buy that, all it does is make us want it more. It's psychology. Tell me, tell a toddler they can't have a piece of candy. How much more do they want that piece of candy, right? And they actually suggest that to you when you're like introducing new foods to toddlers. Anyway, we're not here to talk about toddler foods. But if you tell yourself that you can have whatever you want, then you can have whatever you want. And it doesn't make those off limits foods feel so tempting. It just means that you eat them in moderation, right? Maybe instead of seven slices of pizza, you eat two slices of pizza. Or maybe you like Oreos. I know when I was pumping, I was all about some Oreos. But maybe we eat two Oreos in one sitting, not a sleeve, right? Because Oreos are delicious and we don't want to be without them, right? I don't want to be without them, though I don't eat them very much anymore. But my point being is if you are eating these kinds of foods occasionally and mixing them in with your meals, you're not going to miss them. And so you're not going to go like all binge crazy and start eating these foods because you can't have them or you shouldn't have had them or you need a cheat day or whatever the case may be. So include all your foods. Nothing is off limits. Just do it in moderation. Number five, and this is the only place I'm going to tell you to limit calories. And that's going to be limit the calories that you drink. You would be amazed, astonished, <laughs> The calories in things like fancy coffees and like regular sodas, those things are packed with calories and sugar. And guess what? 
you're not going to get full at all. And it's an easy way to blow a calorie budget that was otherwise pretty spot on. So know how much you're consuming in those and maybe try to make some changes. Rather than having your super sweet drink, maybe find some sort of TikTok alternative. I'm sure there is one <laughs> that has lower calories. Or maybe try black coffee with Splenda instead of a bunch of sugary syrups. Can you tell I like coffee? I love coffee. Coffee, coffee, coffee. <laughs> I do. I love me some coffee. But other drinks have them too, right? So think about some swaps. Again, we don't keep things off limits, but just limit those things to less often and swap things more often for those lower calorie items. And finally, this probably isn't going to surprise any of you, but the more often that you can eat at home, the easier it's going to be to stay in a calorie budget because most restaurants have really high calories for things that shouldn't be high calorie. My husband and I were joking the other week about some green beans that were like 300 and something calories at a restaurant. And we're like, how did you possibly, what could you possibly put in green beans to make them 300 calories? That's absurd. My point is that restaurants want food to be tasty, right? And so because of that, they're more likely to have a higher calorie. If you can eat at home, you're more in control of the amount of calories you're in your foods. Or you can use subscription services like a Blue Apron or HelloFresh or one of those. We've had Blue Apron for years and we really loved it. It was just too time consuming for us uh, at the moment, but it's a great option and it has really delicious meals. Or you can also eat out, but go to restaurants where you can see what the calorie nutrition information is. A lot of places have them now and you can build your bowl like at Chipotle or whatever. You can build your bowl, whatever you need to do, and it will show you how many calories are in it. That way you know, again, knowledge is power, right my friends? So that's gonna do it today. Hey, there are six today instead of five. How about that? <laughs> so that is it my friends. Those are my secrets to staying in your calorie budget but still feeling full. And remember guys, small changes can lead to big results. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you did enjoy this video, I do hope you'll give it a thumbs up and please subscribe so we can come and be a mom community together so that we can help each other reach our goals and live our best lives. Thank you so much for watching and let me know in the comments what kind of content you want to see. Bye.